Hi, Hunters. Thank you for tuning into the Flushman and Dustin podcast brought to you by Nick and Tyler, the boys from Ring Next Week. In this podcast, we will talk about guns, dogs, gear, and our successes and failures in the field through our combined 40 years of experience. We speak with hunters just like you from across the nation about their days in the field and the many memories they built with their friends and family. We are excited to have you listen. Now let's get to Flushman and Dustin. Welcome back to another Flushman Dustin podcast. Tonight, uh, we have ex- some exciting news to tell you about Tyler and I future hunt. And our guests tonight, we have Ryan Baumgartner and Uriah Hansen. Some of you may know Uriah through Pheasants Forever, um, maybe through Tinder, or maybe your mom knows him. <laughs> so... <laughs> well, it should then to take too long to start. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Thank you for coming on the, the podcast, guys. Uh, Ryan, have you been on before? But why don't you start and give a little, uh, just a little background about yourself, and a little introduction. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Ryan Baumgartner. Uh, I'm I'm in Des Moines Metro here. I, I'm a, an attorney eight months out of the year and, and bird hunter for four. Uh, so I got a Irish Red Setter, a field one, and a, and a Boykin Spaniel. Nice. What all right. I got? <laughs> Your eye wants to give us a little background about you as well yep uh you're right hansen i i too live here in the des moines metro um professionally when i'm not bird hunting i'm an hr manager here in des moines and then uh on the other side of me are my bird dogs got an english setter Gemma, and then a german short hair who is getting to be the geriatric age mozzie um grew up in north central iowa and then have been in des moines since 2010 and and call most of the state home for hunting nice nice Nice. so you guys recently went on a trip to new mexico um give us a little bit about that um i've never been there never hunted there conditions um just uh yeah tell us about it It (laughs) it's a brutal drive it's it's yeah it was 18 hours eight eight for 18 and a half hour drive down there uh, you know, we we were pretty excited to get down there. So we had adrenaline for maybe the first, I don't know, 12 hours. Uh, but man, once we hit Texas and, and those 75 mile per hour, two, <laughs> two lane highways, uh, it, it made for an interesting nighttime drive. Oh, and, uh, and if anyone thinks Nebraska is boring, drive through Western Kansas. Oh man. That's cruising. <laughs> 75 two lane highways. Holy oh. shit. Yeah, so we did what With we the actual did. speed limit, or you guys yeah. just cruising? Yeah, that's, that's the speed limit. Yeah, wow. that's, and, and that is the uh, the the amount of speed we were traveling on the record. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, it was a long drive. Uh, and what did we do? Seven days down there, Uriah. I think we did five days hunting. Seven days we were in uh, South Central New Mexico. Uh, we're not going to blow up with hot spots like. Uh, your last couple podcasts of, of guys BSing about hunting Nick. Uh, I, I got. But, I mean, honestly, honestly, I'm go just, use. <laughs> honestly, just tell us where it's at. <laughs> uh, we're in the set. We're in central Albuquerque. Um, yeah, we just got the 200 yard area away from houses, and and that was our that was where we went. But that way, we could easily get into a, a backyard for supper. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it's like I said, we did five days and man, it was, it was different coming from a couple Midwest boys that we've maybe done some, you know, I'm, I'm originally from North Dakota. So we run into some Huns and done, you know, some more sharp tail, you know, centered hunting. Uh, I, it, it was tough. I mean, a lot what of was it for the dogs. <laughs> it depends on the dog. Uh, my, my Irish did really well. Uh, paw pad wise. Um, but the, the dogs pads by the, the other three, by the second or third day, we were, we, we were booting up. We had blown through boots. We were trying to find some, uh, tire inner tubes to duct tape onto the bottom of their feet. Uh, and, and scenting conditions were hard for them. Uh, you know, we, we've been saying that Iowa was dry this year and, uh, it was nothing like dry down there from, from, you know, again, Midwest point of view. Yeah. And I think from my point of view, you know, I've hunted out West in Wyoming, Idaho, um, nothing compared to the New Mexican desert from 
dog conditions, but also just in the birds. Uh, I think, you know, all four of us here on the podcast are used to pheasants and I think pheasants run, but I would say oh. desert, desert quail make a pheasant look like a sitting pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> The entire trip, we shot one bird off point, like that we could definitively say was off a point. Otherwise, uh, it was Running hard. Right? Yeah, Ryan's young dog was, you know, doing well, but it was almost to the point where when the f- dog first went on point, run past the point 50 yards and then hope the dog swings out another hundred to, to block the birds Jeez. for you. Holy cow. So how many birds That's did you guys end up really getting? We were shooting pretty good birds. I mean, we were getting yeah. into... We were getting into 50, a lot. 75 a yeah. day of seeing birds. Um, yeah. You know, the only day was... shoot- yeah, we were shooting birds every day, all the guys were. So, I mean, right. You know, it's always uh, a good day hunting no. if, you're, if, you're, if you're seeing birds. I mean, right. the, the, only, the only day we didn't see many was when we tried to, to Mern's hunt. And that, that was an adventure. And the, the adventure that day made the trip, whether or not, I mean, we saw what, what, did, we, what, what did we run into? Scalies on that trip? uh is, we, or was I, it gambles on co- the bottom uh the first was a covey of gambles as we were on a death march back to the truck and then uh a scup a covey of scalies when we were trying to trespass our way out <laughs> which it was a failed there. trespass we, we <laughs> right. couldn't even trespass that's how bad we were is because they w- welded the gate shut so we had to uh continue on legally d- down the road that nearly <laughs> killed us all right I mean, that's that's the I, I'm sure we've shared the video with you guys on the on the road. I know everyone's seen the bumper uh, <laughs> from that trip, uh, but it, it was so bad on the on the way out when we couldn't open this gate. To, there was a house that we went and tried to, but it was abandoned. Uh, and then the, the gate was welded shut. So we're like, well, I guess we're going back uh, back the way we came. And yeah, the other guy, Pat and I were like, well, there's no point of all three of us dying. So you you got this, Uriah. <laughs> we'll, oh, we'll walk up the rest of the hill. <laughs> Uh, we'll meet you at top. <laughs> so now, Ryan, I saw uh, I saw an image and looked like Uriah was giving you a foot massage. You were laying on the couch. T- <laughs> tell us, t- tell us about that, and you know what was going on there. Oh, I, yeah, I mean, that? if that's how Uriah is, I'm excited for this uh, this coming the, fall. I'm just a giver. You can ask for what. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so was that two days before season ended? Maybe January eighth. Uh, yeah, it was the weekend before. Weekend before the season ended, uh, we were out. We were mostly looking for for Bob White quail. We were hunting some spots that we knew had them, uh, but you know, and there were I, we ran into way more pheasants that day. But there was a creek, and I was trying to hop it. Uh, and I picked out my grassy spot. I had seen where the uh, where the dogs had ran through, and I thought it was a safe landing. And I hopped, and there was a, a hole there uh, that led to a nah, a, a walk in. The the pun intended for a walk in clinic uh and it, it was a bad sprain uh the judge or the judge the uh doctor rated an eight out of ten for me so i wouldn't feel bad about myself for all the crying i did uh but then two weeks later i was trying to walk walk uh new mexico and and it's it's i don't know how you would say shaley shelly or shaley maybe blah, blah, when you're walking on the side yeah, the, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's not real. I mean, it's not like you're busting cattails, but it's hard on your ankles because you step in, it slides or the gravel yeah. gives out uh, on the first day we hunted. I, I was like, guys, I don't know if I'm going to be able to hunt anymore. Like it's, it's bad. Like uh, I cannot, I, I'd have no stability. Uh, but Uriah stepped up. I, I had a brace on too. I, I had a brace wow. and uh, do you think, tight do you think maybe and, if you would have got some new boots, like, you know, we've heard that you wear, you know, 10, 15 year old boots around the, the prairies. I, I wear them until the uh, shoe glue doesn't fi- fix them. Uh, Ur- Uriah buddied up though and, and taped my ankle. I mean, a, a few times he went real high and, and I still have a, a, a ring around my, my ankle where it's missing uh, hair. Uh, and I know that wasn't an accident, uh, but at, at least I got him taped and I was able to, to at least get out there all days. I had to take the, the easier paths a little bit and, and not, you know, go a hundred percent like uh pat the mule was going uh yeah but it was rough now you're right you've been you've been traveling and hunting uh, a lot more states than us this is the first time you've been to new mexico yeah so it's the first time i've really gone south i've done uh nebraska a couple times done wyoming and then done idaho as well and uh yeah north dakota trips don't forget that 
And North Dakota, yeah, North Dakota yeah. as well. Can't can't forget North Dakota. <laughs> as but, much uh, as I try. Desert, <laughs> yeah, desert's just a completely different beast. Uh, even you know, I thought it'd be similar to Wyoming. Uh, sage grouse hunted out there and did some blue shaley cover. Just nothing like uh, what what really I hunted before. Um, and we're hunting big long draws in New Mexico, or or that's what we found the most most success in was so. Imagine your waterways of Iowa. Yep. And we drop them 30 foot down on the waterway, and then you got the hillsides on each side with the nastiest and fine. Anything that can poke, stab, or try and kill you was there in those draws um, from cactus to everything else. So, uh, oh, it was definitely, down there? Uh, we didn't. Uh, very rarely are we going to run into any snakes down during the hunting season. Um, they said if it got above 60, the chances are a couple could creep out, but they're going to be so lethargic not to really. So we didn't have any run-ins and with the young dog and then my setter who neither of them are real intelligent outside of finding birds. I'd say we did pretty good of not finding any snakes. You know, they say that in New Mexico, if you have a few good retrievers, you usually get more birds. Well, all we oh, had was no. a boy. Hit, so we were missing. <laughs> yeah. With, what would you guys do different? We had a duck dog. <laughs> uh different i probably get some higher maybe higher quality boots uh, well it doesn't our... sound like you have quality work. <laughs> not me for my dog anyway for me. Oh, okay. for dog. I, I splurge <laughs> on the dog I, you I don't have chip for boots so what's yeah. the uh if nike made a boot that'd be great yeah, you're just gonna uh, go you can go to pay less shoes and fucking get a pair of boots that are better than we got probably oh, man, i got i got some danners and uh danners and schnees they're supposed to be decent <laughs> but not after 10 years no, I don't think they're made to last that long. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it may be hunt different. I mean, uh, hour wise and, you know, we, 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 it was mostly a freelance. We have a buddy down there, Tyler. He's been on the podcast a couple times or before. Yep. Quail Tyler Hawk. Sladen. Yeah. Quail Hawk on Instagram, Tyler Sladen. Uh, he, he was able to point us in some areas, uh, but we, most of it was freelancing. I think we had better luck freelancing. Uh, but a lot of it, I think, is figuring out what time to go out uh, and, and when to take our afternoon breaks and then go out back again in the evening. Uh, I, I think that's all we would do different is just really change our times. Yeah, times. I think our, our struggle, time. too, not only the times was, I mean, our dogs are used to just upland for the most part, right? So you want them at 100 yards in, mostly up here. Um, you know, I always joked about who the hell wants a six, 700 yard dog, but down there i can completely yeah. see why you'd want a dog that runs you know 250 300 yeah. plus yeah. um and i think that's what we got lucky if my little setter started figuring them out after the second third day and she'd loop around and run big kind of like you know what what some of the iowa dogs will figure out with the roosters if you can block them and stop them um only you know you're you're talking 150 200 yard swings at a minimum to stop those desert quail from running yeah, that's crazy because you probably can't even option of like in Iowa, you can put blockers at the end of waterways or fields. You know, there's probably not even that option down there. I mean, maybe if you could be like, yeah, go down two miles and park and yeah. we'll get down there and there's going to be a lot of sitting. Yeah. I mean, we were walking some of those draws and I could see them running through the, through the mesquite and whatever that other bush is. Uh, and you could see them and then you, you, they just disappear. Like you could see them at like 10 yards and you'd run up and try to kick the bushes, but those bushes ran forever just, uh, in, in those fast draws birds. And, huh? Yeah. It, they, I don't know if they're faster than a, than a rooster, but they are certainly more elusive. And even you, we had a couple that we shot that were wounded and, and they'd run into a bush and they just disappear. Uh, you know, and the one, remember the one under the cactus, Ryan. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if the dog went to stop there on point, we'd have no idea it was sitting there under a cactus. They just yeah. blend you know, into their surroundings so well. So we kicked that cactus and everything trying to get it out because we're like, we know it's here. Uh, but it, you just, even with leather gloves on, you know, you're trying to reach yeah, in there yeah. and you're still getting poked. And, and I don't know, I don't remember how eventually that one got out, but I think it was, I think it was a bunch of like four or five hands trying to go all around the cactus uh, to get it. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I was pulling I was pulling cacti and thorns out of the dogs for a week after Jeez. New Mexico. Be laying on the couch, and all of a sudden you'd run your hand over and feel a thorn still buried into them somewhere. Jesus, that's crazy. How how close the shots were you guys getting? 
<laughs> on your average. Uh, so we, we went down there, right? And we're shooting. We're like, ah, oh, you know, seven, eight shot will be fine. We'll throw in the skeet chokes, improved cylinder, right. all that. After the first day, we said, to hell with this. We're going modified. <laughs> you ain't going full? Jeez, <laughs> no. I, if, uh, if I would have had my mind. pattern master, I, you know, I would have whipped that out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean. It, it was anywhere from we had some that you know you'd be walking and pop up right at your feet uh and then you'd have the other ones that were 40 yards when the covey busted and by the time you realized what they were they were at 60 70. i mean 60 I 70 yards was... for 60 70 yards for you is probably nothing being that you hunted <laughs> yeah. since hunted, you hunted since you've been 12 and just shooting birds all the time Davey yeah Crockett all right <laughs> oh god no were you guys think, were you guys the other the difference is you know for anyone that's hunted Bob White's, you know, Bob White's sort of they're up like an atom bomb where they're up and sort of just explode everywhere where those desert quail, when the covey get up, they're up and they're flying all in one direction. They know exactly where they're going. Uh, one of the locals told us they have their escape route already planned. So it's kind of like a pheasant. They get up and they pick their direction and go. Yeah. Only yeah. they're already directionally picked by the time they get six inches off the ground. Um, and we had to take oh. off on a lot of shots out of dog safety just because they'd fly so low they, yeah they yeah. stayed low and down those valley and well and then when we're hunting up the valley you got you we had two guys up high one guy down the middle um you had to watch out for all your buddies yeah. buddies and dogs you mentioned that uh they get up like 40 yards and you had to wait till 60 yards are you guys hunting areas that you couldn't shoot certain game or was it just it was by the time you picked them up Okay. You, they'd get up at 40 but by the time you could shoulder and say you know quail They're just that fucking quick yeah 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 That's I mean, you're watching that I mean, far away you're looking you're watching your dogs work you know yeah. a little bit closer um uh, or you know looking at our garments trying to figure out where the heck our dogs are <laughs> yeah. you know i, I think and not only that but i mean you got the doves you could easily identify and we were shooting scalies and gambles I mean, you couldn't tell the difference when they were flying. You just saw a gray body flying, and then but someone pick it up and say, what did you shoot? And so I thought, you know, there'd be a little more differentiation given the gambles have the brown heads and all that. But when they're flying, they're pretty similar. You can't really tell the difference. Yeah. At least hey, you guys, us, you guys would someone, love it. Someone's going to listen <laughs> to this podcast and say these guys are a bunch of morons. But, right. but you guys talking to us for the last week already realized that. So it's nothing yeah. really cool. Well, I mean... <laughs> Especially for your first trip out there. I mean, what do you, what do you right. expect? It's I, I, completely I mean, different. An, an unguided freelance trip to the yeah. desert. I mean, and you're, it's your dog's first time out in the desert. I mean, everything's just the train, the brush, every, I mean, the birds are 100% different, you know? And yeah. So I think, I think it's pretty awesome that you guys were even successful, successful yeah. with. Yeah. I mean, we were birds shooting and... birds every day. I mean, there, there was not a day that went by that we hunted that we didn't shoot. Now, some days we shot more and than others. Um, the one day all we shot was a $1,400 bumper and a gamble's quail, but <laughs> yeah, you know, how did that bumper um... go? We didn't hear that full story. <laughs> uh, so the, the interesting thing out there and, and right hunted all over, you got all these two tracks that are just taking you through. You have county roads that all of a sudden somebody just gated off and called their own. Yeah, like uh, so you sort of have ad hoc. And it was a pin that we got from a buddy that lives down there, Tyler, you know, Tyler that we mentioned. And so we were just, how do we get to this pin? And, and we cruise down a two track, come over a hill and we said, Oh shit. Well, we're in too <laughs> deep now. We might as well keep going. Okay. Uh, yeah, by the time the will... truck leveled out, it was, it was, you're, you're not reversing. You, you're going. Yeah, to... I mean, we were, and, and we got down to oh. a creek bed that was just a V and it was Ryan and Pat got out to help me try and guide through. And all of a sudden you just hear, <laughs> and at that point you just hit the gas and go, cause yeah. there's only one way out. <laughs> yeah. We, I, I thought we all thought you were going to get stuck for a while. We're lucky that was a cheap bumper that just crimpled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think the new bumper is going to crimple that. Either. No, you yeah, the new, the new bumper, right you're, new bumper you're stuck down there. What'd you put in for a bumper after this one? Uh, so I went to uh, friends over at American Topper and accessories here in Des Moines and had them hook me up. I got a, just a Weston bumper, but it's a little more heavy duty off road. Yeah. Dude, you put a lift uh, in I feel sorry too? for the guy that runs into me in, in the Walmart parking lot hitting that because it's <laughs> yeah. not going to give. <laughs> so your frame's going to bend before your bumper gives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lift uh, would have been I, nice, but I, I don't think he he did that. <laughs> yeah, so I uh, I also, after getting back and getting a car wash, noticed that the mesquite thorns do a nice job on the paint job of leaving some marks when you went through. 
So uh, our favorite spot was Hubcap Hill, as we referred to it, because <laughs> if you came over the hill, there was a hubcap lane there. <laughs> Not sure who took a car with a hubcap that far back into the desert, but... But uh, there's a reason the hubcap was left. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, like I said, a lot of those paths we were going down and it's like, all right, let's try to get over to that, you know, that, that spot over there. We, you know, we were using Onyx and looking for draws and areas and, uh, and then those, those roads would just, for a while, it'd be a two track, like he was saying. And then all of a sudden that, that one that we used twice went from a road to all of a sudden we're driving in this huge Creek bed for a while, uh, to come back out, you know, further up on a road and again. some guys and then you're in some guy's backyard you're, you're literally right. like then, oh. then all yeah then all of a sudden we're opening a gate in some dude's front yard and 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 going through that <laughs> to keep going dude that's crazy <laughs> yeah it's it's different i mean the, the nice thing though right is everything's i mean almost everything was public i mean yeah. it was huntable as i mean that guy's yard was on on a government land federal land it's you know you get 200 yards away you're you're good to go yeah. Uh, or whatever it was, 200, what, 250. I think it was What 200. time does season open out there? Is it eight o'clock? Like most? Uh, sunrise. Sunrise, the sunset okay. out there. So okay. uh, you had a lot of hunting time. Uh, and what we we failed to we failed to do our research before we went, right? Because we we're like, uh, Tyler's going to yeah. be down there to help us. Then he had some personal stuff come up and wasn't able to connect with us, but still helped us out with some tips and pins and that stuff. But on the way home, Ryan decided to finally do some research on the trip and, and realized we should, instead of hunting right away at sunrise, we should have waited till 9, 10 and uh, went out that late morning, mid afternoon as the quail are getting off the roost and more congregating where we were hitting them early and, and it was sort of, you had to find them or, or not. But we, we found that out about mid Kansas on the way home. So like you're saying like nine, 10 o'clock in the morning, instead of them being so sparse or kind of close together yeah. and are are they near like water holes or it just that's where we had our most luck was uh earlier or mid to late afternoon from from like that 10 to 2 window yeah uh we were having the most luck by finding you know either a water hole or a, or a, or a wetter creek bed or cattle yeah, tanks if, if, when cattle we were getting tank. sad and, and depressed we just drive <laughs> cattle tanks and at least then we'd see quail. We may not be able to right. shoot the quail, but we'd see yeah. the quail. Yeah. Do they have a lot of cattle tanks out there? Yeah, so it's they like, do. Um, you know, they, and, you know, if you see the fences, you know the cattle are going to be around. Uh, I will say don't trust the farmers. The one farmer said, we saw, we talked to one farmer. He said, oh, go up here. There's always a covey of quail along the fence in the feedlot. Go shoot them. We went up there. Sure as shit, there was a covey of quail running along the fence. Big they, covey about, too. I mean, yeah, we, big covey, probably 40, 50 birds. Oh shit. Yeah. Damn. Um, they take off running. We see a house and we say, ah, you know, we should, we should hold off on shooting. Let's go ask this guy and make sure since they got pretty close to the house. And he's like, ah, no, you know, don't shoot there. Go down to the next fence. Well, we're <laughs> yeah. thinking Iowa, right? Like next fence, you're going to go down, you know, quarter mile, maybe. Yards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the next fence was like two miles in a mile past the BLM boundary. He was just basically telling us the nice way get to go get lost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Do a lot of farmers have like cattle and stuff on this government ground? Is that kind of how you get yeah. into that? Yeah. Yeah. And I think every, I mean, a lot of that Western stuff, there's cattle or sheep running on all that. Yeah. And I don't think there was a piece that we didn't see cattle out on, um, which right. the, I mean, the good thing is then they got water around, right? Uh, yeah. So as long as you're, you know, the cattle are there, you know, there's water around somewhere. So that was sort of the, the, the saving grace, other than you know getting bull rushed by a herd of forty cattle, thinking you were going to feed them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we had the... a little trouble getting into the truck that, <laughs> that was oh, running, running around because all the all the cattle were surrounding the truck, and your eye and I, your Pat doesn't have a dog. His kid's allergic, so he's got to wait another like. 14 years till he's out of the house uh so your eye and i are like man we gotta get the dogs away from the cattle so we're walking the other way we're watching pat get chased by cows trying to get into the truck they think he's gonna feed them <laughs> that's funny uh, what, that's what the, was the one bad part like? about the cows it took it took a fits a, a little bit i think the my irish setter puppy he still wanted to pay, play with them i think he just thought they were big dumb dogs to you know, <laughs> yeah he wanted to go after them what was the weather like was it, was it pretty hot? Uh, it would start upper 20s, low 30s. So, I mean, oh, you know, 
we that, were wearing... that's why we were hunting mornings. I mean, we we're like, yeah. man, this is cold. Yeah, so I mean, wearing... when I think New Mexico, I'm thinking, you know, 70, 80 degrees. It, it got you know. to what, probably mid 60s, low 70s. Yeah, mid 60s. But the, by the time it hit 11 o'clock, even at, you know, 45, 55 degrees, you're, you're down there at that higher elevation, that sun. Uh, you know, a couple yeah. of those days, at one point, we found a, a couple of big cubbies by some water tanks, and we just got lucky that they were on BLM. And so we turned around and, and came back and tried to get onto them. You know, we dropped birds and the dogs are all just sitting there panting, looking at us like, what do you want us to do? <laughs> when you say so, BLM, what does that mean? Uh, Bureau of Land Management. So it was either oh, BLM wrong. or, uh, yeah. <laughs> I took it. I took it. I took it completely different. BLM. Yeah, Bureau, Bureau of Land Management. <laughs> yeah. That or uh, state of New Mexico. And, uh, you know, I guess the one tip I would say, you know, if we're going to give a any secrets out is you'd be surprised that the state of New Mexico ground for some reason held bird it's better now it wasn't like there was any different management practices but it just it was just they were more on that than the BLM ground and it yeah. could be a patch of New Mexico surrounded by BLM so there's no rhyme or reason or any differences but we did have a little better luck there did you guys run into <clears throat> to any predators or anything when you're out there or None other than all. Uriah, no. uh, the javelinas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, did see, we did see one uh, javelina and a, and a piglet or whatever. I don't know what do you call a baby javelina. But, oh, you know, yeah. Nothing else. Yeah. Oh, and base. we think we saw him because when we first walked that field, Fitz one on point in some brush. And then he's on, he, I mean, he's rock solid point. And all of a sudden he starts growling. And I'm like, well, what's going on? And I walk closer <laughs> and then he starts barking while still on point. And I was like, ah, let's get out of here. <laughs> Uh, you know, and however long it took us to finish walking back two, three hours, then we see the, the javelina and the ma or the piglet run by and I was like, Oh, thank God. Cause oh yeah, that would, <laughs> I have another buddy that was out in uh, Arizona just last week and his dog ran into a javelina uh, and it, it did it not look pretty. Tore it from hip to knee, a pretty good right. slice straight down. Do those javelinas have, they don't have tusk at all, do they? But yeah, they just, do. They yeah. do. Yep. Fuck. Those yeah, I mean, the dog up. they're just a, you know, different version of a wild hog really and, and yeah. i think that's what everyone we talked to before we went down there said i won't worry about the snakes the coyotes the wolves the, you know anything other than the javelinas you see javelinas and, and you better be ready to shoot but is it can you shoot those basically any time or no you have, you to, have, 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 tags to, or you have to have a tag for them so luckily we didn't run into them because we didn't feel like buying another 200 hundred dollar tag but yeah we, we got lucky there <laughs> yeah that's Jesus. a good thing yeah I think the biggest thing I learned from that trip was, man, a good vest is a lifesaver out there. Yeah. And what's I mean, your vest? Uh, I have a final rise vest. Yeah. Um, and I, I have the wings, wing works, which after seeing Ryan and final rise, the wing works is basically like the grandfather of the final rise. Right. It took a really similar design and then just made it lighter and, and made, made it better. Things and made it better. Right. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you I like mean, about really, that? If, and, I, and I've had my wing works for four or five years now which at that point that was one of the best vests on the market and that's when they started coming out with the final rise and the hunt ready and chief upland and all those but if i was going to buy today i'd buy the final rise it's half the weight of mine wouldn't you say ryan yeah yeah and it, it the, just the way it, it disperses weight i mean that's the same with yours yep. it's it's half the weight without the stuff loaded in it but the way it fits or it, either of those vests fit when you're when you're loaded with what five liters of water uh, to go out on your hunt and, and we'd have to stop the five liters was just to make it through the first part of the hunt. And then we'd go back and, and get five liters more and then go hunt again. Um, just having the, those hip belt, you know, the way it sits on your hips uh, and, and puts all the weight there instead of your shoulders. Yeah. Uh, I mean, man, that, that I, I have a, I have some other vests, a Filson vest. Uh, no way that that would ever survive anything out there. Yeah, I think, I think that's the biggest thing I'd say for anything I've done outside of Iowa is you, you don't appreciate the value of a good vest and good boots um, until you right. until you step out in that. I, you know, chucker hunting was the same way. You're, you got five, six mile treks from point A to point B. It's not like here where you're out walking a 40 and back to the truck in a yeah. you know, half hour, 45 minutes. It's yep. you better have lunch. You better have right. all the shells you need. You better have dog first aid. You better have everything. And I remember when I, before I started traveling for, to hunt, I, you know, I think it was Andy Taylor on one of those hunting groups was like, you, you Midwestern boys have no idea that what we need. And that's why we have these vests. And I was like, oh, you guys are full of shit. And, yeah. uh, 
yeah until you get yeah. out there and then you know desert quail you're you're sprinting and so you better hope that vest is really holding on because now you got right five liters of water taking a sprint through the desert <laughs> trying to get to the dogs hey, I'm, I'm looking i looked it up right now yeah that, uh, i have 300 a... 315 bucks yeah for that vest <laughs> worth every penny yeah <laughs> i have the I... the hunt ready vest and um just based on the trip that we're playing together i'm i'm gonna set it up different than what i have it here whoa 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 hey what'd you <laughs> what whoa uh, what well might as well break the news so well i'm not fall, gonna break we're talking fall, best. tyler and i are going you just said the trip we planned this later yeah. this year tyler and i are gonna go to wyoming with ryan and uriah and we're gonna we're gonna get out there and new experience and probably not the land for uh, black lab or maybe even golden, <laughs> but we're going to take them. Yeah. Well, we, fi- we figured we'd do our, you know, our, our community service, the three R's, right. The, <laughs> the recruit, retain, reactivate, bring you two guys out, show you what bird hunting's about. Oh shit. Uh, we're <laughs> we're uh, super excited. I mean, we've only, I, I, I don't know about Tyler, but I've only been to South Dakota, uh, other state bird hunting. So to go to Wyoming and, um just just the train uh, the views i mean i've been through uh, yellowstone and all that kind of stuff but i've never actually been out to you know in the wild like that to hunt so pretty excited yeah and I, I think you know for me and i have the sage grouse sitting right over here on the in the corner oh dude that thing's that's can you awesome. get that closer that yeah, that's very on. sweet it's like a goddamn it's still like there. Hey, over did, there did, yeah. did Corey mount that for you yeah, so uh, Corey's done all my birds. Uh, yeah, that's take, same. Take, oh, take that's two cool. years. That is real. <laughs> yeah, it's you quail. know, Corey's one of those guys that you're not going to get your bird back in six months, and, and you don't complain because the bird you get back is after you use Corey, you're never going to use anyone else again. Yeah, I mean, I got my sharp tail there, and it's a year and a half yeah. out. And I'm, I mean, I no hurry to get it. It's whatever. Yeah, and uh, but, you know, I, I just think, you know, the sage grouse is one of those iconic birds, right, of, uh, you know, the bird of the West, and, and anyone that's seen them, watched them, they're, they're, they're freaking cool, and uh, when, when they get up, you know what they get up. If you think a pheasant's big, a sage grouse makes, it, it just is no difference. Do they, do they have a specific sound when they get up, you know, pheasants like cackle and whatnot? Uh, no, they just sound like a B-52 bomber, because they're really? so big. No, when they when they call them a bomber it's not because it's because they they're just big um, are they bigger than a pheasant like yeah i'd say they're probably about double the, yeah i would say like a big male sage grouse can be about double the size of a rooster well uh, fuck, oh, i guess i'm not going to be bringing seven shot then i'm going to be bringing four <laughs> shots so don't well, bounce you, off you, of them <laughs> well you'd be surprised at how soft they are i mean ryan you've hunted rough grouse and you know i've hunted sage and sharp tails and chickens and, and i'd say the grouse are pretty soft birds and so i think we hunted with six shot when we were out there sage grouse yeah yeah is that is that yeah. steel or lead or bismuth uh i mean i've switched all to bismuth now i started shooting boss a couple of years ago and, and just yeah, we shoot boss as well. yeah I, i'm just too lazy to look what shells i have in my vest so it, it makes it easy there yeah but I, most of that federal ground out west you can still shoot the lead but okay like i said i mean Shooting God, you know, now, so really I'm gonna I'm gonna take off and go on this trip that we're talking is gonna be, you know, three four hundred dollars. And my wife's like, yeah, that's great. I'm gonna shoot sh- sage grouse, and it's gonna cost me eight hundred dollars a month, <laughs> just like my <laughs> sharp <laughs> Yeah, yeah. it's really a twelve hundred dollar trip. I'm sorry. Well, hey, you know, and if you lose a bumper, there's another fourteen hundred. So right. well, yeah. if it, if it yeah. wasn't for the bumper, I mean, we we didn't, <laughs> you know, on the Wyoming trip, we plan on on camping because we, you know, Uriah's already got a spot from last time. And, and it's not close to any town, uh, but that New Mexico trip, we had three guys split an Airbnb that had like a quarter acre, uh, f- fully fenced in yard, oh, uh, three bedrooms. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And, and it was, I mean, one spot was only like what, 15 minutes from the house. Yeah. Uh, the other spots were all about an hour, hour and a half is where we were going. Uh, but even, even doing that, I mean, and, and groceries, if you, if you, you exclude the amount bucks. of yeah, if you if you exclude the bush light we drank, uh, it would have been an under four hundred dollar trip. And I think a lot of people, I mean, that's a good don't, trip. Don't understand. Yeah, you can do hunt trips cheap if you. I mean, without a guide, hunting trips are cheap. They are. I mean, it's more fun too. So you got to learn it. You got to. 
So it, we uh, found uh, comparatively. I mean, yeah. man, if we yeah. would have had it, if we would have, if they all would have been days like that one day where we only saw those two coveys and, and lost the <laughs> bumper and uh, shed some tears. Now, you, know, you, you gotta all, have you gotta you have a shit chip in. Yeah, that's why though you. It's like a, a Ranella podcast where the to make a trip memorable, you have to have suck. <laughs> if, yeah. if, if, the more suck factor, the more fun on the trip. Yeah, and there were I a agree. lot of suck memories on this trip. Yeah. Now, did you guys all chip in and pay for your eyes bumper? That's uh, this, are you guys true? No, it was it was already dented, so it, it, was, <laughs> it was basically like a true attorney, right? Yeah. Like, there's the attorney. Uh, we don't know where this happened. Uh, I mean, yeah, it could have happened on the way out here. You know. I don't know. It was it was yeah. it was damaged already. I can't buy damaged goods. Uh, yeah, I told Pat I'd pitch in for his deductible, but you know if he's not going to use insurance, I mean I. Whew. Yeah, I would I would have not used insurance either. Then you get a hit against it, and then it raises. Yeah. Everything. Well, shit, insurance would have made you put one of those cheap bumpers back on anyway. So. Yeah. Exactly. What's the point? Um, right? Yeah, I mean, but that's what you know when people like I said I've done Nebraska a couple times, Idaho. Wyoming I mean you can do these things for cheap right it's not we can go out there and we'll go to Wyoming and each of us will spend less than what one person would spend on an out-of-state elk tag and I think yeah. that's what gets confused is you know these people that are out doing these big game hunts you're buying a five to seven hundred dollar tag and you're getting an outfitter and you get all this gear if, if you got a tent and a cot and a sleeping bag you can do these things pretty cheap but I mean we'll eat sandwiches over lunch we'll each you know bring some burger or steaks on the way out and our biggest bill will be the booze right of, of having yeah. beers at the end of the that's, night i mean literally that's what it was in south dakota too when we went uh well i guess our airbnb was actually pretty expensive for what we found it was that was that was this past year like 290 a person it was pretty Oof. expensive for how long yeah. i mean for our, five ours was, five nights oh that's not terrible ours, i mean i mean ours was 80 i think with with all the fees yeah. and stuff that they tacked on a night, yeah. But for three guys, you know, it ended up being like two fifty a guy for the week for us. Not, yeah, it's yeah. And, and the problem was we had to do an extra day just because how long the drive was. Like we we had it for a day. We actually didn't use it. Yeah. Uh, so we could get in and just you know get in at three in the morning and not worry about hanging around. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And then you know when we went to South Dakota, we had six guys. And then you got to find that much more room which is yeah. one of the price yeah. just went. that's where you say you can only have four guys and you buddy up yeah <laughs> no i agree i agree we actually kind of decided that um after that trip it was like it was fun it was it was probably fun just to have more people with you for the for the adventure of it but in terms of like hunting it was yeah it was a little, it was a little chaotic yeah three well, trucks running around and well know. the problem is you get some of those big groups and we had a pretty big group of eight or nine or 10 of us out in Idaho, you just get so many personalities, right? And then you get, you know, we want to hunt this way. You guys want to hunt that way. I think that's the important thing as you plan these trips is you got to make sure that everyone's on the same page of, you know, we're driving 14 hours to hunt. Yeah. Um, if you don't yeah. want to hunt, you can sit in camp, but the rest of yeah. us are going out to hunt and, and don't cry that you've sat here all day alone because <laughs> I didn't drive 14 hours to drink beer and get up at 10 in the morning. Right. I was going to say yeah. pick, pick guys you can spend 14 hours in a car with too. Cause yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's a haul, man. That is a freaking haul. Well, you want to get, you guys won't have to worry about Tyler. He's pretty quiet. Might be me. <laughs> yeah. I always get made fun. Or no, we were going to put you guys in the same vehicle so we didn't have to worry about either of you. Right? Well, that's a, <laughs> <laughs> Haley always makes fun is, of me. You know, Ryan complains about me sleeping seven hours on the way home, but I don't think Ryan drove seven hours over the entire 36 hours of driving that we did. So false, false. I, I drove, <laughs> I drove, uh, all through seven a, hours when we switched Kansas. Yeah. On the way out there. Yeah. I didn't majority driving out there, but afterwards, you know, we, we had a rule that backseat could sleep and cause there's three of us. <laughs> So if you're in the back seat, you can sleep. Someone's got to stay up to keep the driver company. Otherwise, two people sleeping and just the driver sitting there alone with his thoughts in Kansas would be brutal. Yeah. <laughs> you turn into uh, you know, Johnny from The Shining. <laughs> Guys have hills, people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always Haley always makes fun of me because well, I, with being an officer, I'd I won't have a radio on. I'll drive hours without a radio on, without talking nothing i used to sit in a car for 10 hours without a radio and oh. i drove all the way out to south dakota I had a 12 hour 12 hour drive to 
the guy that lodged this past year drove with just a dog's knife, not a radio on, nothing, just cruising 12 hours. Also, yeah. if you guys are going to get Tyler a wedding present, just give him cash. Otherwise, you'll see it for sale on Facebook in a week. <laughs> I, I, I like told it. Uriah, I was like, maybe I'll just give him money towards his hunting license. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that way she can't say no. Be like, well, my license is already bought. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't. I was I just going to be selfish and buy him a bumper dumper so that I didn't have to worry about pooping in a bucket. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, I got a five-gallon bucket with a toilet seat on it. Already well, cut out. We, perfect. I'll bring I'll bring the lime and the shovel so that way you can dig a hole and throw some lime over it. Should cut the smell down. I don't want to be smelling all your beer shits. <laughs> oh, yeah, it'll be fun though. Yes. Yeah, now I'm excited yeah. for the. Although, the although I, of it. I'm pretty sure I heard on one of your guys's podcasts previously because uh, you know I'm a big fan of the show and I listen to all of them. We appreciate uh, that. Yes, yeah. we do appreciate that. <laughs> uh, wasn't that I swear you guys were talking about in South Dakota people being too drunk to get up and hunt the next day, too hungover to get up and hunt on time on one of them? Uh, <laughs> Uriah, no, oh, you're probably no, on no. a different part of the screen, are you? Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, so Nick, he's been hung over a few times. That one wow. day, the, <laughs> the one day we literally fucking drove around for like. I think I wasted a whole take of gas that day because everybody was too. I wasn't the only. Hunt. I wasn't the only one that day, though. Well, I wasn't saying just you, but you're the one on this call, <laughs> right? Well, yeah. I'm driving around, everybody else snoring in the freaking <laughs> truck. I was like, dude, come on! Like, there's a bird on the side of the road, and yeah. no, I was like, uh, whatever. Let's keep going. Hey, we're gonna be we're gonna be up and at them and out there hunting. Uh, I I've taken yeah. a pledge starting September, dry September. <laughs> well, it'll last till we get there. And I, <laughs> yeah. one of the other things, and I don't know if your guys' dogs drink from water bottles or whatever, but you know, that's the other thing is I figured it out when we went out to Wyoming and that was our first big trip was it's called a hydro pack. It's, it, it's my camel back, but it's got a squeeze on the reservoir or yeah. instead of like just the bike tube, you can squeeze it. And man, that thing was a lifesaver for the dogs. I mean, Ryan's got to carry a, a water bowl around for his dogs so to drink we out. have we have a discount code that we can hook you up with gun dog outdoors water bottle that has a little bowl at the end of it oh, you okay. just press a button and the water comes out and then you can suck it back in it looks Anything? like something someone would carry at a dog park with their poodle but right hey i mean if they need fucking water they need water. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you want to share that on like you know like the neighborhood mom's website for the <laughs> and dash hounds or what if if they need a discount let them know i'll get i'll hook yeah. them up <laughs> uh, and, and another reason i do the bowl is because that's uh the, the owner finalized that matt davis i mean that he he talked on one of his podcasts he's like i'm, I'm not wasting water out there you yeah. know you squirt it at your dog they're only getting a tenth of that water or whatever it is so. yeah, that's what's nice about these is you hit the button for the water to come out and then you can hold it i, I just, and I just keep, back in. keep keep track of the water bottles one of them is fresh water one of them is water with slobber and, and the dogs are going to drink the water <laughs> with slobber yeah yeah so i don't put it back in it's my like plan it's like is, my boots i'm too cheap to waste even water yeah yeah my plan is taking one like big nalgene water bottle on my left side for me and then having another big one on the right and then carrying these with me so when they're empty i can just refill them now uh, Hey, I wouldn't get attached to that name because by the time September comes around, he'll have a new water bottle. Well, it's just the only name I can think of. I don't know what else is out there. And it's cheap. I wonder what kind of dogs you're going to be running in September with everything out. I can have goldens anymore. I can't get rid of them. I have too much vested in them. Trading up for something. No, I'm not that type of person. Just with gear. Yeah. I haven't but, seen any Nick, good gear though. Nick, I, I've been Nick calls me Nick calls me 007. So oh, fucking 007. You got <laughs> camera on his head, guys watch on looking at him. He's got well, shit on. He's yeah, got I like having a watch. I like up. knowing what time it is. I, I, I was I, love, I mean hey, I, hey, I, double o, you got you got some I got, the, <laughs> I got the Alpha 100 this year and the in the instinct watch. And man, it, I, I don't know how I hunted without it. This yeah, is a, I mean, the watch tells you where the dog said is. That right? I got him a watch for his push present. She didn't really yeah. understand that. I guess guys aren't supposed to get a push present, so Sarah was a little upset at that one. But yeah, 
I did my pushing uh, 10 months before that and I still got a present. <laughs> <laughs> but even at my Boykin, I mean, he'll even, he'll even only be like 30 yards out or something, but you know, I won't see him. You look down on your watch, you know, there's your two dogs running around. It tells you right where they're at. What, what's, yep. can I ask you what that system goes for? I think what the Alpha 100 is seven ninety nine. Yeah, I think it's and down can, to like yeah. So the and watch you, you, can, is, you can control you can control both dogs from that then as well. Yeah. The two, two yeah, with an extra collar, so then I I have the the handheld you know on my vest, uh, it's in case I have to hit you know any shot, but I don't I don't or correction stimulus, but I don't use any of that on my dog. So then you can sync it to a a, a Garmin watch. Uh, so you can look down on your watch and see where your dogs are a lot easier than pulling that hand held out and looking at it. Does the, does the watch just say like 30 yards to the Northeast? It's basically? yeah. It's got a little has, arrow and arrow okay. and yards. Nice. Yeah. And, and the nice thing is like Ryan and I have each other's dogs synced up on there. So when we're hunting together, we, you know, we just turn, flip sure. on that. I got fits or oh, he's that's got cool. Mozzie and, you know, especially with the pointing dogs, you know they lock up and cover and you're like ryan 75 yards you know keep going keep going and right. he's like i don't know what the hell you're doing where yeah. it's nice you can just look down and see where the dogs are or, or in new mexico when we get you know over different rises and we lose each other well you know I'm, we're not really that far away because i can look down and see your eyes dogs or you know x amount of distance over that way they're just over that next draw i'm not really lost yet but you're so you guys can see the dogs on the your watches or your Handheld, like handheld, yeah. but you can't, yeah. you can't like give a stimulant to your Uriah's dog. Like Ryan, you can't. Uh, it depends on how you share it. You can okay. either share it. I think I, I probably have shared mine with Ryan that he can just in the freak yeah, accident. Just know I can't, yeah. 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 Or if I lose mine, that he we get the dogs back. But okay. yeah, you have that ability, which that's I, I'll nice. say, and I think Ryan would say the same thing. And anyone that I know that's hunted with the alpha, um, whether it's the 100 or 200, once you go to it, you don't go back. So um, it's one of those things. It's a slippery what, slope because yeah. once you make what's that, the, uh, what's the 200? The 200 I is 749. Yeah, the 200 is basically the same thing. So you have all the same functionality. Only it's updated, right? It's like the iPhone yeah. 7 versus the iPhone 8. Okay. Uh, it's got a, it's got a little better screen, a little more reactive time. Um, and a couple things from the from the gist of it, I would say the average hunter, the 100 is going to do fine. I've had both. I just was bored one day and, and felt like upgrading and and did it. And I'll say I love the 200. You know the the things that the 200 has that the 100 doesn't. It, they're really nice, but it's not. You know, like you can't go back. Right. And it, and it's nice out there to have. G, I mean, we would mark the truck when we would start walking too. Um, oh, that's a good the, idea. Right. So even like Wyoming, you can mark the truck and, and not worry about getting lost because uh, yeah. you can always get back to the truck. And there were some times on that, that Mern's walk. I was like, where the hell are we? <laughs> like, <laughs> huh. We got, cause you're just going over giant draws up and down and you know, they don't run East and West and North and South. I mean, they all run it. So you follow one draw down at, you know, a direction and then you start following another one up and all of a sudden you, you walked a bunch of angles and, and distance that you weren't thinking when you originally got out of the truck. Yeah. Like I'm going to, you, you originally get out and say, I'm going to walk, you know, North, Northeast, uh, towards that hillside. And then once you get up there, then you start going all over the place. Does this beep for you? Like if your dog's on point, does it make a noise? Yeah. Or? Yeah. It beeps and vibrates. And the nice thing with the watch is it clicks to the watch then. So you're, you'll hear your handheld beep beep and then your watch will vibrate and buzz at you and, does it matter uh, the Garmin watch? Could you have any Garmin watch or just uh, I think certain it's instinct ones. in the Phoenix? So I think oh. the instinct's like what a two hundred dollar watch, Ryan, something like that. And the Phoenix it, it's is on sale all the time. Yeah. And then so, yeah. does it have a tone, not a beep, but a tone for your dogs? So like right now, I yep. use just a quick yeah. tone yeah. for a recall. That, that's so. all I use for my dogs is to you know yeah. to okay. tell them to come back is tone. Yeah. I don't because that's yep. that's so nice because you don't have to yell, you don't have to blow a whistle, right. you don't have to make any noise, yep. you just hit the tone. They come back that was kind of yeah. and you guys you guys have probably hunted with guys i sent you guys that video the other day and ryan said what the hell is that beeping noise right uh yeah. i've just forgotten what beeper collars are like because i've all my buddies hunt with the gps collars now and it's just so nice and quiet yeah uh, and, and i think i kill more birds i think 
I like being quiet. Running <laughs> yeah. constantly, yeah. and I don't have a headache when I get done. You guys yeah. imagine that Tyler likes being quiet, guys. I, <laughs> if just in case anybody's listening, just check Facebook Marketplace. I probably have collars for sale here soon. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's 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 a few things I've learned uh, over the years. If if it's good enough for chucker hunting, it's good enough for <laughs> pheasant hunting, uh, and and if it's good enough for pointing dogs, it is great for uh, retrieving dogs, flushing dogs. How do you think, if, in your honest opinion, this is a dangerous question, yeah. but uh, how do you think uh, like labs or our retrievers will do with birds? Let's let's stay Wyoming, but if then we can talk about New Mexico type birds too. And I, I got a bone to pick. My my lab is not fat. <laughs> <laughs> he just had a big head. He's in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. He's in the eye of the his, his head his no. head's bigger than his body, but other than that, he's curvy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he's your uh, it's like the girls I date. They're curvy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I I think it all depends on the dog, right? I've hunted with some of the labs that'll, you know, bus cover and push 75 yards. I think, but if you got one of those retrievers that is and i'll say mainly a waterfowl dog or something like that that it it stays close and it's going to hunt that 10 15 yards it's going to be a challenge but i think the thing to remember is you're hunting wide open cover right you got 10 20 miles either side of you that you can hunt and so you just want a dog that's not afraid to get out uh and get away don't worry about that (laughs) well i'm not i'm not i'm putting in i'm putting in like an extended full choke so i can shoot something at 60 yards like (laughs) Diesel will he will he is a I would I would call him a ranger lab uh, yeah. for a lab so he 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 will go if I don't recall him he will go out 60 70 yards so he'll be busting down. birds for us okay that's no because okay, he points he'll that, point. no he'll point <laughs> um, you know some people think of pointing labs is fucking stupid but he does it on his own I never no, him to do no, it no I've, just, I've seen enough bloody <laughs> <laughs> Now we're going down this conversation. Oh, yeah. uh, here we he go. Just, again. Let's get some AKC standards and all he that. Just, yeah, he, no, he just yeah. does it on his own. I never yeah. trained him to do it. He just all of a sudden just uh, does it. And I'm like, oh, fuck. He's on you know, before we were heading out there, I thought Fit or uh, Paco was actually going to be one of the, you know, he was going to be a godsend out there because you watch some of the videos of like Slade in her house talking to uh, uh, Jacob Little about hunting. He guides out in Arizona. Yeah. Uh, so hunting the same birds. But it, th- I mean, uh, a cocker. I mean, a lot of these guys run cockers out there to get the birds out of those bushes. And Paco has no fear of getting tore up to go through a bush. Yeah, but uh, you know, what probably hurt him is you don't hunt him anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you don't listen to Uriah and uh, we Chris didn't even know Mitch. he was still here. Yeah. Yeah. I, didn't even know he was I, I didn't pick him up. I thought he was dead. Was it? I thought there was a funeral oh, service. That I still retrieved more birds than no, the ringneck boys he over there. He wasn't oh, a funeral oh. service. Oh. That thing would just go in a ditch and move on. <laughs> yeah but he he just his paws are, are they just were not made for that even though he hunts iowa and, and north dakota and i mean i don't know how many days i hunted it was north of 40 and he was out yeah. uh and he's finding snow like ice snow he'll cut up his paws but still hunting but man no, he just did not last in the desert you just leave him in the truck then or with that airbnb i mean oh, we yeah. left yeah, him yeah. and Mo- him and mozzie were left there and we were just hunting with the setters yeah yeah i think it was part of it was just the heavy those dogs that are heavier on their feet right um well that doesn't avoid well well for me my dog weighs 90 pounds in shape so he'll be be fucking laying down yeah but i mean it was just i think that first day we went out pretty novice right it was we got in at three in the morning we woke up went to walmart and it was like one o'clock and we're like shit there's this pin 15 minutes away let's go try it we're not gonna have any luck we, we normally get 40 yards from the truck and a covey of 50 quail explode. And we're like, Dang. me and Pat looked at each other and we said, was that birds? Did we just see birds? And I mean, we're like in, on the backside of a campground. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. That's what we crazy. had to, we had to message Slayton and we're like, dude, <laughs> we're, we're hunting where people are camping. Is this, is this yeah. right? And he's like, Hey, welcome to New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's crazy. And, and so, I mean, but that was some of the roughest cover because you had the thorns. I mean, we had nasty mesquites there. And then you had the draws that were, you know, probably 30, 40 degree inclines with a hundred yards on each side. Um, and, and the dogs were just, they were, know, they were hunting it like, like to go, right. Yeah. Yeah. They, and they've been in the truck for 20 hours. They were ready to get out and go. And so they just blew my short hair and Paco blew through their pads instantly. Are you guys yeah. bringing, are you guys bringing boots out to Wyoming? 
Is uh, that a similar yeah. train or not? Yeah, that's going to be something that's always in my vest from now on. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm, I'm going to carry, you know, five, what was that brand you were talking about? Lewis boots. Lewis, Lewis. boots. Yep. And, and I'll say last time in Wyoming, we didn't, we didn't boot the dogs. We didn't have any issues. It was more clay than, than oh. Rocky, but in an inch, I mean, who than, knows? Yeah. And I, and I, Fitz could have done the hunt in New Mexico without getting booted. Uh, yeah. We just did it as a precaution. I mean, he's yeah. got, he's got really big, big paws for, for his size. Um, so he puts all that weight, you know, on spreads it all out. Kind of like that, you know, laying on a bed of nails kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so he was hey, fine. I, you know what? I would like to try that laying on a bed nails thing, but you got to do it. Let's see how it works. <laughs> you're yeah, the one that wants to try it, right? You're the one that wants no, to try it. I'd like it. to you see it. Said. You just no, said, you said, I'd like what to you try said. it. Yeah, I'd like to I'd try like it with him. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you two are doing yeah. on a bed of nails, but I'm out. We're gonna stay out of this one. Yeah, is that what nailing means? Yeah. So that's what Uriah is doing when he's on those Tinder dates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, shit, that's awesome. It, I, I will say, uh, our buddy Pat now, he's made multiple uh, appearances on this uh, podcast by name only because uh, Midge, Chris Midget, talked about him a lot. The Virginia Dude. boy on his yep. North Dakota trip. Yep. Uh, called him the mule on that, but we've we've affectionately named him Mom. Because <laughs> uh, he takes care of us every time we go camping, make sure we're up, make sure we're uh, we're eating right, uh, and that's we, make sure we don't to, drink too much. We don't drink too much. Tells us when to stop drinking, and, and we're hoping one of you guys can fit that role when we're out in Wyoming. And I'm, you better I'm have Tyler. it's more Tyler than <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell you to stop drinking. That's your own damn. Fault. Every every hunting party needs you know. You got your roles like your I was saying. Everyone needs that camp mom to make sure everyone else is okay. And, and I think you're getting nominated, Tyler. Yeah, all in favor. I like to keep I. things organized. <laughs> yeah, don't give anything to me because we won't find it after I do. Yeah, Ryan in in North Dakota, we gave him the, the trash bags day one, and they went missing until day when we were cleaning up to go home because he put them in the – I don't even remember where he put them, but it was the dumbest spot, and no one would put trash bags. <laughs> I always put things in great spots that I think are going to be great spots, and I'll never you know forget that I put them there, and then I forget I put them there. Thank you. Yeah, don't kids. give me anything on this trip. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. And fuck those four. <laughs> <laughs> sending me a cuss text right now. Is that <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think you know you Ryan, dig right forgot, as a, <laughs> Ryan oh. forgot his shotgun one day in New Mexico. Um, in North Dakota, I think the is the ethos still had the, held together with a zip tie from October of last year, Ryan. As far as I know, I dropped it back off at the gunsmith, uh, but it did make a whole season with a zip tie. <laughs> Where was the zip tie? It was back through the, the re- trigger. Right through the yeah, receiver so pit. Or, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It holds the trigger in. Yeah. Yeah. Bring some zip ties out there, too. That's a good <laughs> life lesson right there. Speaking of uh, what were you saying? Not having your gun. I don't know if you guys heard of Nick's story about not loading his gun. No, but it'd be a Ooh, great I don't time think to you hear. Have. Uh, Nick, yeah, well, well, so Tyler and I first time out to uh, remember Nick's Nick's really good shot, your eye. Right. <laughs> he can shoot wafers or whatever. Just Ritz or Vanette <laughs> wafers too. Yeah, like are we talking Ritz, saltine? Ritz like, bits? I mean <laughs> club crackers? What kind of <laughs> Ritz. <laughs> Ritz. <Okay. laughs> That's kind of well, Ritzy. We uh we uh <laughs> in South Dakota mm. and it was our first time out there and Tyler and I haven't seen shit. I mean it's it's like I said. It you was guys are a, used to docks and and you know right. Highland, we're used to, I mean we're used to planted stuff. birds. I mean it's different when you're not paying for them to be out there, right? Yeah, it is. I mean wait. Sucks. Different. It just sucks. <laughs> we don't we don't ever hunt wild birds. And uh, you know we got out there we just fucking clueless motherfuckers you know walking around we don't know where we're going. Well anyway. We got one bird in like two days. I'm like, what Oof. the fuck? And we're <laughs> hunting all this ground, public ground. Um, finally, we get to the last day and we drive like an hour north. And I'm like, if I don't get a fucking bird today, I'm fucking done. So we get out of the fucking truck. We get out of the truck and Tyler's over there. You know, Tyler, fucking go, 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 fucking gadget, putting all the shit on him. I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, let's put my champs on. Let's get the fuck going. <laughs> like, he's over here just 
camera on, camera on, got another camera on, cell phone on, watch is good. Uh, you know, let me oil my gun quick. And, uh, you know, so we're going out. So we get walking out the field and, you know, me bitching at Tyler the whole time. Fucking diesel. Like Tom. <laughs> like he is on this fucking bird. I'm like, oh, man, I'm like, we're into him. Fucking bird gets up. I just pull up. Why well, didn't load my fucking gun? <laughs> you don't have me the whole fucking time. <laughs> didn't load it. And he's I, like, I, I, why the fuck didn't you shoot? I go, well, I'm going home. I said to load my gun. <laughs> so we left. We left after that. I left. I was fucking done. <laughs> it's going to be a long drive back from Wyoming with an attitude like that. No, I, I've, <laughs> changed, I've changed a lot. Yeah. Oh, I drink more now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calmer. I drink more <laughs> to cope with the sorrows. <laughs> I, I, I mean, who hasn't done that though, right? Yeah. I had a problem. So I had the the Sweet Sixteen last year, and they have. Right. Uh, and then you sold that, right? And now, yeah. so he had a pro- he had yeah. a problem with it. And so he bought the same gun, but had a problem with it. Yeah. No, they switched <laughs> up a little bit. Anyways, back to my story. They uh, there's a button underneath that can I don't know if it uh releases like the firing pin so when you pull the trigger it doesn't fire exactly what it does never looked into it but I kept fucking hitting that so I'd go to pull up on a bird and I'd pull the trigger and nothing would go off and I'd have to rack a shell and then it fire and I had that happen so many times that year's freaking that's like uh the ethos ha- is has the mechanism that doesn't have the typical Benelli click, right? And, and that's the, the claim to fame to the ethos other than it's, you know, really pretty and, and painful like, when you drop and scratch it. But Put together by zip ties. Yeah, well, but Pat had the Montefeltro silver and, and we were talking about the Benelli click and that, and I would walk over and I'd pull his pull his action back just just enough that he that it would uh not shoot when he went off and after the first or second time he started realizing that anytime i came over and touched his gun to slap my hand yeah. and keep me away after yeah. the first or second time a fun guy to hunt with play. i mean yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's funny. if there's a way to sabotage you i will sabotage you so right. um it's a dog eat dog world in the field and, <laughs> Noted. Well, I guess you'll be hunting over here and I'll be way over here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll be on my UPs and, and I'll be shooting birds and yeah. Ryan will be crying because he's walking through thick stuff and not shooting anything. U- UPs, we call it, they're, they're, uh, they're Uriah paths. We call them UPs. <laughs> it's, it's the easiest walking from point A to point B. It's, <laughs> it's, it's game trails. Uh, Oftentimes it is the most successful walk of the rap. Yeah, cause, cause <laughs> everyone else is out in the thick stuff pushing them out, and you're just standing on top of a road shooting them while we push them to you. <laughs> I guess hunt smarter, not harder. Oh, exactly. That's hunt, UPs. Hunt. It's gonna be hunting alone more. <laughs> yeah. uh, We're not even to September yet, and uh, you might not be going, Uriah. <laughs> yeah. He's already he's already sent me the pin, guys. That's we don't right. need him. <laughs> hey, we don't need you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> awesome well guys we appreciate it that real yeah, fun. lots of good stuff Looking forward like a continuation to this. of our uh, conversation all day yes yeah. <laughs> i know i look at my phone sometimes like oh 70 million missed messages <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> like what do these guys do like, do they have jobs or we thought hopefully this something about you guys. Are, yeah, hopefully <laughs> yeah. none of our bosses are listening. Yeah. Ryan's boss is wondering why his billable hours go down from <laughs> August through May. I only text when I'm driving, you guys. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's why sometimes some of my shit doesn't make sense because I'm trying to fucking watch the road too. But. So safe. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure your employer is real happy to hear that part. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's yeah. going to my insurance. Yeah. 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 Got through the road. Can't wait, to, hear, boss. Can't wait oh, to see you texting with a 14 foot trailer behind you on the way to work. <laughs> oh, it's better no, than you. We're taking fucking walkie talkies. I don't have text. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we can get some CBs. We yeah. did walkie talkies last year and south dakota between trucks man that was so nice oh. well uriah when we were going up to north dakota this year i see him over there swiping and all of a sudden we're on the the rumble strip <laughs> any rights and i'll tell you there there? was nothing worth swiping for in north dakota but we were <laughs> yeah. we were trying to be you know improvise and say if i could find a nice farm girl that had some access for us to hunt <laughs> it might make it worthwhile Jeez. you would have made it happen too but <laughs> <Yeah. know> <laughs> <laughs> well, at least tried oh shit oh.
Awesome. But I think Ryan, you got to get to the, the airport, don't you? Yeah, yeah. They, she landed a while ago. She can wait it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. Awesome. Getting I should really go pick her up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, guys, we yeah, appreciate thank you it very much. We'll have to have another one. Season gets closer. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely have one in Wyoming, eh? Yeah, yeah we'll, I'll bring we'll a, I'll bring out some I'll bring out the podcast gear. Yeah, well, we'll have one after I outshoot Nick at the trap range. Oh, dude, we what got. We, what is this and happening? by the way, we gotta film this shit. Oh, because... everyone, everyone just real riled up and lean towards the cameras yeah, when we start talking about. Like, <laughs> yeah, ah. we'll Facebook Live each station. Yeah, let everyone know where we're standing. Re- regardless of the outcome. Oh, now he's getting fun. nervous. Right? Yeah. Regard. You know, I that's, said this that's in what the loser says. I said Someone's this planning to lose. Says, regardless of the outcome, we're gonna. No, have I said with. this in the fucking text. Oh man, you're a participation <laughs> trophy guy. No, I'm not a participation <laughs> it's trophy kids, guy. Kids, it's okay as long which, as you. Hey, which hard. one of you guys played in college? Anything? No one of you. So suck it. I'm, you know what? Taking your balls and giving them back to your ex-wife. There you are. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a fun sporting place. I can't wait to right. this riled up with firearms. Yeah, I'm not even gonna shoot. Yeah. Tyler and I are just gonna drink and watch. Yeah. I'm gonna wear my fucking bulletproof vest I still have. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, shit. That's awesome. Funny. All right. Well, everybody stay tuned for that shit show that we're going to have this summer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, again, thanks guys for coming on. We appreciate it. Looking forward to this fall hunting with you. Thanks guys. Appreciate yeah. it. See you guys. Thank Bye. you. See ya.